So in the last video, I went through how to create a Nolly map using OpenStreetMap data that we acquired using Quick OSM, a plugin for QGIS. But if you want to make slightly more sophisticated or detailed Nolly maps, or indeed land use maps, then there's another way you can do so using Ordnance Survey data. Now, to get ordnance survey data, you either need to be a registered student or staff member at an academic institution, which means you have access to ordnance survey data through Digimap. So check with your school or your institution if you can do that. You will need to register and get yourself to this geo portal, at which point you will be searching for the topography layer of the OS master map data set, or you can buy the data directly from the ordnance survey. However you get the data, it's going to arrive in a folder that looks a little bit like this OS master map with a whole bunch of numbers. And then if you unzip and then you open up, you'll see a whole bunch of different files. The most important thing you need to know is that it's the shape file that you're going to drag into the project. Okay. Now remember, if we're using ordnance survey data, we're almost certainly working within the United Kingdom, which means we need to make sure we have the correct projection system for our maps. So make sure that your EPSG, if you down here on the right bottom right hand side, EPSG is set to 27700. Now to change that, you can just click once on that file and you can search for 277. Zero, zero, and you can see that it's brought up the projection system OSGB 1936 slash British National Grid. And that's the name of the projection system that we want if we're making maps in the United Kingdom. So, so having made sure that our projection system is the British National Grid one, we've dragged in our topographic area data. And if I expand the layer over here on the left hand side will see that the data has already been styled according to the information contained within it and that styling is coming from this file this qml um, so if i was to change the name of this file for example add a little character or two into the name of it which makes it different from the name of the shape file and try and bring it in again well, now it doesn't know how to style it because it's brought in the shape file. It's gone, hey, are there any other files in there uh, which have got exactly the same name, topographic area, but instead of saying .shp at the end, they go .qml. Mm, no, there isn't. So I will just bring everything in as one single mass. And you know what? That's totally fine for our purposes because sometimes you won't have a styling sheet with your shape file data. You just won't have it. You have to rebuild it yourself. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, in order to style data, you first of all need to know what kind of information is embedded within that data. So to do that, you want to right click on your layer and you want to open the attribute table. If we just change the view of our attribute table by switching over here, down on the very bottom right hand corner, switch to table view. Now we can see all the different categories of data that exist within our shape file. So let's say that we want to make a nolly map, right? That means we need to figure out a way of styling the buildings one way and hiding all the other shapes in the data set a different way. How do we do that? Well, let's just see how this data is organized. We can see that we've got XML type, we've got the ID, we've got the version, we've got the date version date, we've got a theme. Now theme could be interesting. If we have within theme building, then we've immediately got a way of differentiating one type of shape from the other. So let's just sort the data by theme and you can see already we've got lots of shapes which are labeled buildings if i scan down we can see that not everything is building some things are categorized as land other things categorized as roads tracks and paths and other things categorized as water 
okay? So that's in the theme column, okay? Let's quit out of our attribute table, right click on our topographic area, hit properties, find the symbology tab, and we're going to change the symbology from single symbol to categorized. And in the value on, if you're using Mac, then this will be called column. In the value slash column option, we're going to select the column that we saw in the attribute table that told us how it can differentiate between one type of shape from another. So if we click theme, because we know theme contained building themes, right? Water themes, road and track themes. And then we hit classify. It's gonna run through that column and it's gonna find every single instance of a unique value. And this is how we begin to create our Nolly map. We're going to uncheck all other values, water, structures, structures, roads, tracks, we're gonna uncheck all of this because the only thing we're interested in is buildings. Now I'm not sure what differentiates buildings comma structures from buildings, but just in case, we'll keep that checked on. And we're gonna change the symbology of these two layers to just black, right? Because that's the kind of styling that we see in the Nolly map. So to change the symbol, I'm gonna double click on the little symbol underneath the symbol column. And then I'm going to change the color to black, press OK. Now, if I wanna get into the really detailed uh, options of how to change the symbology, I can click simple fill, and then I can go into a bit more detail like the differentiating the stroke from the fill, the fill style. So if we wanted a, a hatch, for example, uh, and the style of the stroke, the width of the stroke, the join style of the corners, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but we don't need to do that because we're literally just making these shapes black. So double click once on our square here, change the color. Okay, okay. And boom, there you have your Nolly map as derived from ordnance survey data. Now, you might wanna stop here because the scale of your drawing determines that this is as much detail as you need. But what if you wanna get into a bit more detail because the scale of your drawing is actually more like this. And what if you know, for example, that a lot of these shapes are actually permeable on the ground floor. That is, for example, this is actually not a building on the ground floor, but a bridge on the first or second floor. Now I know, I know for a fact that that's true, right? Well, if you want to make a proper Nolly map, a map that shows literally how permeable these buildings are on the ground floor, then you need to work out what are archways or what are bridges. Now, just to show you exactly what I'm talking about, this is Smithfield Market, right? In London. Let's go have a look at Smithfield Market. So here we are, Smithfield Market in London. And you can see right about here, just on the south side of the westernmost block, right? Down here. So this is the westernmost block of Smithfield Market, right here. And if I drop myself down onto Street View, here's this strange structure that is showing up on our Ordnance Survey data. Now you can see that this is not a building and the road perfectly well continues underneath it. So if we wanna make a true Nolly map, or at least a map which is a bit more accurate, we need a, a methodology of getting rid of this kind of, of data, or at least characterizing it or styling it in a way that suggests maybe something is there, but it doesn't mean you can't move through this space on the ground floor. Okay, so let's select this shape. And let's open up the attribute table And let's press this button here, which says move selection to the top. And that's gonna bring our selection to the top of the attribute table. 
okay? So you can see that if it's selected, that is yellow in the map, then it's selected and blue in our attribute table. Now let's just see if there are any qualities along this row that tell us it is a bridge. And you know what? It doesn't look like there is. You can see that it's being classified as a building, okay? But there isn't really anything else that might help us differentiate it, let's say from the building next door. So if this is the case, then we need to be able to introduce that difference into the data set. Now there's two ways you can do it. One is rather destructive, and that would be to begin to immediately start editing the actual data within our theme column. To do this, I first need to toggle editing mode. And that basically will allow me to directly make changes into the data. So I could change the entry for my bridge from buildings to, let's say, building bridge, right? So I've introduced a new category into the data set. And if I press save on my edits, right click on my topographic area, press properties, and then I press classify, you can see that a new entry gets created. If I just press apply, you'll see how this, oh, and I deselect my little shape just by, deselect my little shape just by pressing anywhere else. You can see that I now have a, a, a new symbology for my shape. That's one option. And that's a slightly destructive option because it's no longer of the same kind of category as all of its, uh, all of the other shapes that we originally brought in to create the Nolly map. So another option would be to add an entirely new column and have that a part of the symbology through an additional rule. So this would be an additive process rather than destructively changing the data itself. So let's try that now. I'm going to go back into the attribute table of this layer, select my bridge, change it back to buildings, press save, and we'll see that's updated again. And this time I'm going to create an entirely new column within the data set. This is what is known as a field. So with toggle editing mode still turned on, I'm gonna select this option over here on the right-hand side, which is called new field. And I'm gonna give it the following details. I'm gonna call this field bridge. I'm gonna make sure that the type of field is text, that is the form of data I can enter into this field is a text style data. I'm going to give it a length of 50 characters. Press OK. Press Save. And now if I scroll to the end, you will see that I've got an entirely new column called Bridge. And the way this is going to work is by selecting my little bridge down here. And then now that this is, remember, I still have my move selection to top option turned on. I've moved to the end and I'm going to just enter the following yes and press save. Now to make this a little bit more clear, I'm going to change a few more shapes. I know, for example, this shape, this shape and this shape. These are all arcades as well. So going back into our attribute table, I'm going to give these all the same values as well as yes. Then press save. Then I'm going to exit 
editing and just get rid of the attribute table altogether. So notice that I haven't destroyed any of the data by which these shapes were originally classified as buildings. And that, that might be because I want to hold on to this data. I might have a use for its more simple form of categorization later on. Maybe I'm using the same data for a larger scale map for which I don't need to get into bridges and arcades and that sort of thing. That's why it's important to sort of maintain as much data as you receive originally. But what I can do now is make a copy of my original Nolly map simply by going duplicate layer, right? And this is a virtual copy. It's the same data set. It now has two images within QGIS. So if I change the data uh, in the attribute table of one of these layers, it will populate or it will kind of percolate through the shapes of the other layer because there's still only one data set, one original data set that is at the root of both of these layers. I can change the symbology of one layer and it stays within that layer. So let's just go into the properties of my second layer. My categorized symbology stays the same, but this time the value, or if you're on a Mac, the column, that I'm deriving my symbology from is going to be not theme, but bridge. So I need to delete all of these, then press classify. And it's gone through the bridge column and it's found, well, there's a values in there, which is called yes. And then there are values which are all other values. And if I press apply and press OK, you can see how this is working. So those bridges are coming up pink and everything else is green. So if I go back into the properties, I will simply turn off all other values. Okay, that's a bit better. And I'm gonna go into the symbol of the yes values. So double click on that symbol. I'm gonna make this simple fill, mm, not a simple fill, but a, a diagonal hatch like that. I can make the overriding color black and then the fill style is a simple fill which is derived from a diagonal hatch. If I press okay, you can see that it's not so useful because directly underneath that is our original uh, Nolly map, right? Which is showing black and black on black is not gonna show up very well. So we need to do one final, uh, one final move in our symbology. So I'm gonna double click on this once more. And then I'm going to press this little addition sign here to create a second layer within my symbology. The fill color of this is gonna be white. And I'm gonna move it in the order, using these arrows, move it below our hatch. So I press okay. And you can see now it's sitting on top of our original Nolly map, but that white layer, that second component is masking the what would otherwise be normally black on our original nolly and that's it so that's a that's two separate ways in which one can create symbology that reflects a bit more of the uh, detail of the actual experience of the ground and that's it